Though black slaves made up only a small fraction of American Christians in the early 19th century, many who converted seized eagerly on the idea of divine retribution. One was a slave preacher named Nat Turner. Turner's actions in the summer of 1831 would force America to face its deepest fears and help a mounting abolitionist movement gain the attention of the nation. While laboring in the field, I discovered drops of blood on the corn, as though it were dew from heaven. And as the blood of Christ had been shed on this earth and had ascended to heaven for the salvation of sinners, it was plain to me that the Savior was about to lay down the yoke he had borne for the sins of men. And the great day of judgment was at hand. Nat Turner. God in the Old Testament often worked through acts of violence and often protected the Israelites through acts of violence. And it was in that tradition that Nat Turner situated himself. He was an avenging Messiah who had come to save his people from the sinfulness of the slaveholding South. Nat Turner was born in the year 1800 the week before Gabriel was hanged. In 1825, Turner voluntarily returned to bondage after successfully making his escape. The spirit had appeared to him, he said, and told him to return to his earthly master. But in 1828, the spirit appeared to him again. I heard a loud noise in the heavens, and the Spirit instantly appeared to me and said, The serpent was loosened, and Christ had laid down the yoke he had borne for the sins of men, and that I should take it on and fight against the serpent, for the time was fast approaching when the first should be last and the last should be first. And immediately, the seal was removed from my lips, and I communicated the great work laid out for me to do. Nat Turner. Nat Turner confided his intention, he later explained, to four men in whom he had the greatest confidence. It was agreed that they would prepare a dinner, arm themselves, and then begin God's work. The issue here is God made us to be free. God is empowering us to claim this freedom which God has promised to us. And, and so what we, what we see is that uh, with, with, with Nat Turner, the key concept is deliverance. The work of death began on August 21st, 1831, and lasted for 36 hours as more than 40 slaves joined Turner and his men in open rebellion. In the end, at least 55 white people were dead. An abolitionist newspaper in Boston, The Liberator, reported that whole families had been cut off. Not a mother, not a daughter, not a babe left. Putnam Moore, the young boy who legally owned Nat Turner was murdered in the bed where he lay sleeping outside Jerusalem, Virginia. It's horrifying. There were, there were young children who were killed. But you can, you can feel the rage and you can feel the anger and you can wonder whether slavery ever would have ended without that sort of rage. Nat Turner was hanged and then skinned in 1831. And for the first time, politicians in Virginia seriously considered a plan for abolishing slavery, but couldn't bring themselves to do it. Slavery was the soul of American progress. Without it, many argued, there would be no future. 
but to the growing abolitionist movement, Turner's Rebellion was the beginning of the end. What we have so long predicted has commenced. The first drops of blood, which are but a prelude, have fallen. The first flash of lightning has been felt. The first wailings of a bereavement, which is to cloak the earth, have broken upon our ears. The Liberator, September 3rd, 1831.